Welcome to the Feast Mall of Asia live stream. Our big gatherings are suspended until further notice. Your health and safety is important to us. Bless others by sharing this live stream. Here are some health tips that we all need to follow in order to protect ourselves and our loved ones. Number one, boost your immune system. Number two, practice good personal hygiene. Number three, when in public, protect yourself and others. Social distancing and avoiding crowds are good for you and everyone else. Number four, if you're sick, rest and recover. Stay connected. We encourage our Feast Mall of Asia family to continue our discipleship activities online or via phone calls. Let us continue to be Jesus to each other. Keep track of your sessions by visiting this link or by scanning this QR code. Let's support each other in these trying times. Times may be trying, but you can still be a blessing. Let's continue to support God's work by going digital. Here are the ways that you can give your love offering. Choose between check deposits or bank transfer. Message the Feast Mall of Asia Facebook page for more details. For updates and announcements, keep posted through the Feast Mall of Asia Facebook page, the Feast Mall of Asia on Instagram, the Feast Mall of Asia hotline, or via email at info at thefeastmallofasia.com. We're starting a brand new way of teaching at the feast. We're starting something exciting. God is birthing a whole new generation of people who will hunger to follow the Word. By book, verse by verse chapter by chapter, story by story. We're gonna sit at the Master's feet with total humility. 
and allow the text as divinely inspired to speak to our hearts. Get ready because we're going to start this journey of longing and really understanding God and His Word for you. Just right where you are. Get nourished here through the feast. Here in the feast, you are loved. Good morning, Feast Mall of Asia. Our Holy Mass will begin in a short while.
Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the celebration of the Holy Sacrifice of the Eucharist this third Sunday of Easter. The road, of, the road to Emmaus traveled by the two disciples is the path taken by those whose hopes in life have been crushed. Like the disciples, may we turn to the Lord and invite Him, Stay with us, Lord. May we recognize Him in the Eucharist where He explains the scriptures to us and breaks bread with us, setting our hearts on fire and making us witnesses that indeed He is truly risen and is alive in our midst. Our praise presider for this Eucharistic celebration is Reverend Father Bob McConnell. Let us all rise to greet our celebrant and let us glorify the Lord by singing the entrance song. soon as we begin our Mass in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, Father. And thank you for joining us here at the Feast Mall of Asia live stream. We look forward to the day that we can all be with you physically again, but we are connected with you spiritually for sure this morning, and so is Jesus. Today, Brother Dido is going to speak about anger. And if it was one thing that we know about anger is we don't choose it, it happens to us. It's a feeling. And feelings are neither bad nor good, they're just feelings. So, what we do with our anger can either be sinful or virtuous. Let's look back on this week of tension, this week of stress, and remember any of those times that we have, may have expressed anger in a sinful way to those with whom we are confined in our homes and seek God's mercy. To the times we have failed to listen, Lord have mercy. Lord Amen. have mercy. To the times we did not have the courage to speak, Christ have mercy. Christ Amen. have mercy. To the times that we did not take time for silence, Lord have mercy. Lord Amen. have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins. And bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing on that day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the liturgy of the Word. The greatest proof that he is indeed the Messiah of God is his resurrection from the dead. It is the core and the foundation of our faith. The first reading. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed all of you, staying in Jerusalem. Let this be known to you and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commended to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs, which God worked through him in the midst, as you yourselves know. This man, delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. Therefore my heart has been glad and my tongue has exalted. My flesh too will dwell in hope because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You, you will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried, and his tomb in, is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus. Of this we are all witnesses. Exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth as you see and hear. The Word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Lord, you will show us the path of life. Lord, you will show us the path of life. Keep me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, my Lord are you. O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup, you it is who hold fast my lot. Response. Lord, you will show us the path of life. I bless the Lord who counsels me. Even in the night, my heart exhorts me. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Response. Lord, you will show us the path of life. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body too abides in confidence because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. Lord, you will show us the path of life. You will show me the path of life, the path to life, abounding joy in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. Lord, you will show us the path of life. Our Christian faith and hope rest on Jesus who died and rose from the dead. With such a solid foundation, we have no reason to be discouraged. The second reading. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as Father him who judges impartially, According to each one's works, conduct yourselves with reverence during the time of your sojourning, realizing that you were ransomed from your futile conduct 
handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ as a spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand to honor the Gospel. day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. And he asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? And they stopped, looking downcast. And one of them, Cleopas, said in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? And they said to him, The things that happened to Jesus, the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. Some women from our, but we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women of our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets said. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer all these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all of the scriptures. Now as they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going farther. But they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. And so he went in to stay with them. Now it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. Now with that, their eyes were open, and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened up the scriptures to us? And so they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem where they found, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. And the two recounted what, they had, what had taken place on the road and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes hope is a virtue that has to be lived in the darkness. 
But Cleopas and his companion were utterly hopeless. They knew the truth. And that's what they were conversing about. Everybody's telling us that the women saw Jesus, or at least they saw two angels at the tomb. You know how women are. They were probably crying their eyes out, and they thought they saw something, and it was really an illusion. Yeah, but the other one debated, how about the guy? You know, they went to, and, and the stone was rolled back, yes. Ah, but they didn't see him. Come on, he is dead. Now what are we going to do? We're going to go back to Emmaus. All our friends are going to say, we told you so. Why did you follow him? I hope we can just get our jobs back. So there they were walking along this 11.2 kilometer road to Emmaus. And suddenly, we are told in the gospel that Jesus started walking with them but their eyes were constrained from recognizing him. Why would that be the case? We'll think back to Mary Magdalene on Easter morning. She looked and saw Jesus and thought he was a gardener. So to Cleopas and his companion, he was just a stranger that joined them along the way and their eyes were constrained from recognizing him. What does that tell us? that Jesus in his risen presence can show himself in many, many ways. It didn't have to be like it was on Mount Tabor where he was in dazzling white robes and his face shone. No, he looked very ordinary. But then he began to do what Jesus always did well. They didn't recognize his voice, mind you, but they recognized the truth of what he was telling them and their hearts began to burn within them. Now you figure, 11.2 kilometers is almost as long as Edsa. Don't you think at some point along the way they would have stopped and said, oh, by the way, my name is Cleopas, this is my companion, what's your name? They don't do that. Why don't they do that? Because they are so caught up in the power of what Jesus was sharing with them. And they still didn't know who he was at the end of this long walk because Jesus intended to keep going. Where was he going to go? Back to the apostles, of course. And they said, hey, you know, you've been so nice to share all this. Come on, have some dinner before you go. Just like anyone who has a sense of hospitality. So they're not expecting anything. The fire was burning within them. What that really was, by the way, with their eyes not recognizing him, that was the Holy Spirit. Only by the Holy Spirit can the scriptures make any sense to us. So they go in and they're having dinner, just like dinner at the Last Supper. In reality, what this was, was the second Mass. The first Mass was the Last Supper. The second Mass was with Cleopas and his companion. They recognized him in the breaking of the bread. And with those two powerful realities, the presence of Jesus finally recognized in the power of the word, they became not hopeless, but hopeful. So filled with hope that they walked right back from Emmaus to Jerusalem and found out that what they experienced was absolutely true. Now what can we learn from that? What we can learn is that sometimes we are so preoccupied with our fear and our worry, especially during this time. In reality, during this time, Jesus is walking right along with us. We're constrained by our fear and worry from recognizing him, but he's there. And one of the ways that we can begin to get real hope and see that God really is present in this journey through this pandemic is what? To realize that when we are at Mass, we can keep a law. And that law is kept by people who are young, old, evil, or good. And that law is this. The law of diminishing return. What does that mean? That any action repeated many times over a long period of time is not going to have the same return it had the first time. I've celebrated Mass probably about 16,000 times. 
16,000 times saying the gospel of the Lord. 16,000 times, this is my body, this is my blood. We can get so used to that. But now that we've been deprived of being together for Mass, we'll realize now how precious it is. So how do we get away from the distraction, especially during this time? First of all, by allowing the Lord to stir up a flame in our hearts. How do we do that? To listen to the liturgy of the word. Think back today and see if the law applied to you. Do you remember what the first reading was about? Do you remember any sentence from it within it? If not, you may have been distracted. The law of diminishing return. And when I began the gospel and talked about the road to Emmaus, ah, I've been there, done that, I know how it all turns out, and we can again get distracted. You and I are called, especially during this time, to allow God's word in scripture to do what it did to Cleopas and his companions. How do you do that? A lot of people are saying that during this time they're doing a lot of introspection and they're doing a lot of reading, catching up on projects and reading good books. Well, if you're reading good books, why not read the good book? And when I say that, I don't mean a passage from Scripture. Why not sit down and curl up with the good book and read the Gospel of Mark in its entirety without stopping? I promise you that you will never be the same again after doing that. We're used to hearing it in paragraphs, and it doesn't have the same impact. So there's my first suggestion to get the flame of fire and hope within you during this time, is sit down sometime this week and read the entire Gospel of Mark. And then next week, when you come to Mass, right before the Liturgy of the Word, say, Lord, right after the Gloria, I'm going to make an act of faith. I'm going to make an act of faith that there is a word, a sentence, a phrase somewhere in one of these three readings that's meant for nobody else but me. And if you do that, God will not disappoint you. What did he do with the two on the road to Emmaus? He surprised them. Our God is a God of surprises. And if you make that prayer, God will surprise you. A word, a sentence, a phrase is going to jump out at you and then you say, Lord, reveal the meaning of that sentence to me in a practical way sometime this week. And then recognizing him in the breaking of the bread. Right now you're not able to receive the actual risen body of Christ. But at communion time, we will say a spiritual communion. And we say, I believe, Lord, that you are present within me, and indeed he is. And allow that presence within him to help you to open up your heart and let him know exactly what your fears and your worries and your concerns are. That is a time for prayer. But you know what? Prayer is the expression of my will. Worship, which is what we do at Mass, the most important part of worship is to say to our Lord, all right, that's what I need from you. Now, Lord, what do you need from me? Would Cleopas and his companion have Jesus need from them? To go back on the path and go back to Jerusalem and witness. So you and I are called to do the same. Brother Bo puts it well. He says every morning he wakes up and the first thing he says is, thank you, Lord, for loving me. And then he says, thank you for using me today to love somebody else. May that be our prayer at Eucharist today. Because who is the other person on the road to Emmaus? Nobody knows his name. You are the other person on the road to Emmaus. May our Lord enkindle within you that fire and the realization that what lies behind you and what lies ahead of you 
is insignificant compared to what lies within you. And what lies within you is the word and the presence of Jesus who loves you. Let us together profess what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. Now trusting in God's providential care that Jesus is walking along us in our way and listens to our prayers, we come before him now in full trust as we pray. Father, give strength to your people. Father, Father give strength, strength to your people. Father, bless our church and civil leaders that they may not tire of serving you in, in your people, especially the poor, the outcasts, and those who have no voice in society. We pray. Father, we give strength, strength to your people. Father, be with those who are burdened with doubt and discouragement and those who undergo crisis. We pray. Father, Father give strength to your people. Father, bless our efforts and the work of our hands. Protect us from all harm. Give us plentiful harvest and guide those who travel by air, land, and sea. We pray. Father, give strength to your people. Father, in the evening of our life, when our days are coming to a close, comfort us with your merciful love. Look not on our sins, but remember your fatherly care for us. We pray. Father, give strength to your people. For the prayer intentions of our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for the month of April, that those suffering from addiction may be helped and accompanied, we pray. Father, give strength to your people. In the silence of our hearts, let us pray for our personal intentions and all intentions offered in this Mass. We pray. Father, give strength to your people. Let us pray for all who died last night, and especially for their families who deeply mourn them. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, Father give strength, strength to your people. God, our Father, these are our prayers, those we have spoken out loud, those that are deep in the hearts of each person in this name. We trust that you not only hear our prayers, but really do answer them, sometimes in very surprising ways. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. sisters and my brothers pray that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray these offerings of your exalted church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring 
may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is yes, right Lord. and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but at this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of the light rise to eternal life. And the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and is rising the life of all that is, will, is risen. Therefore, I overcome with paschal joy every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Be sad. chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. So humbly we pray that sharing in the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope Broderick, our administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
May we merit to be co heirs to eternal life. We praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him. O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. <laughs> Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, our weaknesses, our failures, but upon our faith. Graciously grant peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. So may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And share a gift of that peace with one another. Peace be with you.
faith given you at your baptism confirms the awesome truth. This is no longer bread. This is Jesus Christ. So behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those who are called by name for the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please kneel for the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself fully to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. against COVID-19 that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Protect the medical experts that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health soon. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in this trying time to work for the good of all and to help those in need. We implore you to stop the spread of this virus and to save us from our fears. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. 
do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. Saint Rock, pray for us. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. Saint Pedro Calusol, pray for us. Please stand. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant we pray that those who are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your, your spirit. spirit. I'd like to welcome my friends from the United States that are watching, my friends Joe and Judy and Angela and Joe and Antoinette. We welcome you to our feast here in the Philippines from across the sea. And to all of you who have joined us today, thank you so much. And now get ready for a beautiful, beautiful talk and some praise and worship with Brother D. Doyle, well worth listening to. And with that in mind, may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and your families to remain with you, to care for you, and keep you safe from all illness. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. We stay in peace. Thanks be to God. On behalf of the Feast Mall of Asia, we thank Father Bob. So, palapakan naman natin sila. Tapos, marinig mo mga palapak niyo dito sa Makati. So, hanggang dito na rin yun, hindi kami kapitan. Joke lang. So, thank you again, Father Bob. Joe and Judy and Antoinette and Joe. Did you applaud too? Bye-bye. <laughs> God bless. Thank you. See you later, guys. Hindi pa tapos. Okay? Kita-kits. Bye-bye. I need co-builders in this place. We don't need to stand here in front. I need you to build the kingdom of God just right where you are. Get nourished here through the feasts. Brothers and sisters, welcome to the Feast Mall of Asia live stream. During this time of uncertainty, we thank you for joining us as we stay connected and stay protected. Together, we prepare, protect, and pray. Here are some health tips that we all need to follow in order to protect ourselves and our loved ones. Number one, boost your immune system. 
it is your number one protection against the virus. Number 2. Practice good personal hygiene. Always wash your hands with soap and water. If that's not available, use hand sanitizer or alcohol disinfectant. Number 3. When in public, protect yourself and others. Social distancing and avoiding crowds are good for you and everyone else. Stay at home and stay safe. Number 4. If you're sick, rest and recover. Refrain from reporting to work if you have symptoms of fever, cough, and colds. Let us work together to keep everybody healthy and virus-free. Share this live stream. Join the Feast Mall of Asia family via Facebook Live. Our big gatherings are suspended until further notice. Your health and safety is important to us. Bless others by sharing this live stream. Stay connected. We encourage our Feast Mall of Asia family to continue our discipleship activities online or via phone calls. Let us continue to be Jesus to each other. Keep track of your sessions by visiting this link or by scanning this QR code. Let's support each other in these trying times. Times may be trying, but you can still be a blessing. Let's continue to support God's work by going digital. Here are the ways that you can give your love offering. Choose between check deposits or bank transfer. Message the Feast Mall of Asia Facebook page for more details. For updates and announcements, keep posted through the Feast Mall of Asia Facebook page, the Feast Mall of Asia on Instagram, the Feast Mall of Asia hotline, or via email at info at thefeastmallofasia.com. And remember, during this time, it's also important to stay updated with official news outlets and government agencies. Prayer over panic. Faith over fear. We are one family and we have a powerful God. Stay connected, stay protected. Welcome to the Feast Mall of Asia livestream. Good morning, everybody. One of God's promises to us is that His love and His peace will never fall from us. And I know we have many concerns right now. Hindi natin alam kung kailan ito matatapos. There's just so much uncertainty in the world around us. But I invite all of us to just bask in His love, bask in His presence, and just trust and hold on to that promise that He has got our back. Then, now, and always. Let's come and worship in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. was drowning in the surging sea you keep me floating when i thought i was losing to this raging storm you keep me trusting keep my head above the
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hi, dear Feast Mall of Asia family. This is Brother Didoy Lupaton. Thank you for being one with us. We had a beautiful time of the Eucharist. And the same blessing that we have here is also the same blessing that goes to you. And I also believe that uh, worship is great for us. Thank you, music team, our worship team, for that beautiful song. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and so, before uh, we start into our preaching today, I, I decide to say a little update on the, our health situation now so i'm gonna put on my doctor's hat so this is uh, an update from your resident doctor and i do this uh, because this is our information campaign and we want to help all our frontliners and all the health teams out there authorities and everyone uh, to keep everybody safe uh, during this time of pandemic i all want to start with something light and funny or at least something light so here's a good prayer for all of us this morning. Dear God, could we please uninstall 2020 and reinstall it? It has a virus. <laughs> Kung pwede la. <laughs> Lord, tapos na sana yung taon. <laughs> uh, but it will end. It will really end. Time will come, it will end. And we look forward to that. And also, I, I want to remind you guys again to please wear your masks. Here's a picture that uh, how wearing masks work uh, if uh, uh, transmission is just very very low if two people are wearing masks okay uh, this is helpful any type of face mask will do even cloth mask any kind of barrier would really help you so please do wear your mask touch the person beside you actually don't touch say to the person beside you wear your masks yeah so uh, I one more update also for me is I want to say to you that uh, for the past few days we've been seeing a lot of uh, uh, weather that's so hot. Init. Naramdaman niyo ba yon? Ha? Thumbs up naman kung naramdaman niyo yung init ng panahon ngayon. And our weather station would say that it would go on. It has been going on. It will go on for the coming days and hope maybe weeks. And uh, there, uh, last April 22 was a, a, a high one, 42 degrees Celsius. It's worse than a fever. And so basically, uh, our response to that is to keep hydrated. So always have your water bottle ready. Where's my water bottle? <laughs> oh, <laughs> so always have your water bottle ready. Please drink lots of water during this time. And I want my water bottle here. Can you shake? Can you say hi? Thank you. Thank you. Say hi to everybody. Say hi. Hello. This is our little mini mask. Thank you, darling. Okay. And so please stay hydrated, my dear friends. And uh, do other things that would really make you feel, uh, you know, cooler. So uh, we do what we can at home. So here's a picture of Mai. Ginugupitan niya ang buhok ko. So... Thank you so much, dear wifey, for this haircut. And uh, sabi niya, ako naman ang pinapag pinapagwapuan mo. So, uh, okay na yan. So, ako, I'm thankful. Thank you, my <laughs> sayong sayo na ang buhok ko. <laughs> and everything that... So, do what you must. I feel so clean and fresh and breezy. And also, please take a bath. Ha? May mga naligo na ba dito? Comment naman kayo kung naligo na kayo. Yung mga hindi pa at hindi nag-comment, alam namin hindi pa kayo naligo. <laughs> so showing you some health benefits of taking a bath every day. It can improve your heart health, your circulation. Take a bath may help you breathe easier. Uh, you will Your brain and nervous system will benefit from it. You will feel more relaxed in the evening after a warm shower. You will feel more productive. Studies, scientific studies have already proven that you're more productive when you are feeling clean and feeling fresh. And uh, bathing can benefit your muscles, joints, and bones. Take care of your immunity and also, most especially, also your personal hygiene. So please take a bath. When you go outside in public afterwards, don't touch anything at home. Go to bath directly. Have a different hammock. A hamper <laughs> uh, to segregate uh, clothes worn in public, clothes worn in private. 
para yung laundry nyo is well segregated and you know which ones are exposed. So, panawagan lang po ni Josea, maligo po araw-araw. Ayan, enjoy na enjoy si Josea while taking a bath. <laughs> And so, uh, one more thing that I want to share to all of you. Uh, Three-step process to take care of your health and well-being. It's an action point. These are steps that we can take every day. And uh, we're going to put effort on it. And uh, basically, uh, not just your physical health, but also your well-being. Step number one, just like this icon, you got to be able to recognize. Everybody say recognize. What you can recognize, you can resolve, which is the next step. But if you don't recognize it, you're gonna miss it. You're gonna, there are also people that I know who are in denial. And people are not, you know, saying uh, true to themselves that they're really actually feeling it. Because uh, if you, uh, ang mahirap dyan, pag hindi mo siya naiintindihan at nalalaman, hindi mo siya magagawa ng paraan. And so, physical health, mental health, emotional health, you gotta recognize it. So here's a picture of a COVID-19 checklist coming from DOH. Uh, this is really good, actually. This is a self-assessment. We can't do this now, but you can Google this one. We can share this picture in our page. But this is just one way to recognize. The higher number of points that you have, the more serious your condition could become. And there are actually uh, steps on what to do uh, depending on your score results. So uh, please, if you have sore throats, so if you have cough, colds, sore throat, diarrhea, body pains, headache, fever, difficulty breathing, are, are you experiencing fatigue, traveled recently the past 14 days, uh, if you uh, have a travel history to a COVID-19 infected area, and if you are in direct contact or taking care of a positive COVID-19 patients. So the higher the number, you gotta recognize it. Really, it's okay just to be able to identify what you're feeling. Feel the feeling so you could move forward with it. On the mental health side, I also know people and we have people in our family in the Fix Mall of Asia and there are so many, you know, you see it in social media, there are people going through anxious thoughts, depressive symptoms and here's a, here's a, a, a picture of it and uh, what's the difference between anxiety and depression? They have different symptoms, they also have some similar symptoms. But again, we're showing this to you so that you could identify it, so you could recognize it. And uh, don't be in denial because the more you keep it in and not, don't recognize it, lalo kang mahihirapan at hindi mo siya magagawa ng paraan. So please, please uh, be true to yourself, be honest with yourself on your physical symptoms and depression symptoms, anxiety symptoms, if you're on the edge, just please, just please identify it and know uh, how to recognize your feelings, okay? Feelings are important and they're there as your signs and symptoms and signals that would tell you what is wrong and what you can do about it. Which is the second thing, after you recognize, you resolve. And it's an action word, you gotta have tools, you gotta have some information, you gotta have some action steps. You, pag may pinagadaanan tayo, dadaanan mo lang yan. Kasi you gotta have steps moving forward. So just let me say to you, what do you do when you have symptoms? Basically, you have to have rest and you gotta recover. Get your own space if possible. If you have respiratory symptoms, get your own space. Isolate yourselves as much as possible for now until you get better. Uh, just to be sure, especially if you have exposure, get well hydrated with enough water, get good food, get some activity. It's good to be active so that you could get your blood flowing. Uh, it boosts your immune system when you move your muscles and bones. Uh, get some a good rhythm of sleep. Get a supplement also, any immune booster like vitamin C plus zinc. Get medicines as needed, especially for fever, paracetamol. Uh, you can use towel baths. You can, uh, you know, stay in a cool place and get help when feeling worse. Okay. And when do you feel worse? Uh, when you have difficulty breathing, unresolving fever. Uh, whenever you feel worse, you gotta be able to get help, which is actually the third step, which we'll expound later, uh, which is uh, refer. 
So, on the mental emotional side of things, what to do when you are feeling anxious or depressed? Here are some do's and don'ts. If you're feeling anxious, you're feeling depressed, do deep breathing exercises. Take a deep breath, get oxygen in, and then exhale carbon dioxide. You know, good deep breathing exercises, taking a pause and do deep breaths is actually an immediate uh, way to resolve your anxious symptoms. And it opens up the blood vessels, get the blood flowing, relaxation uh, hormones will be out there, and you will feel better just by doing deep breathing. And second, you can also some ex do some exercises because it regula regulates your nervous or even depressive energy. Uh, get some dopamine in your system by moving, and dopamine will make you feel good. It will make you feel accomplished and fulfilled. Take a pause from everything. Tigil muna. 15 minutes of quiet time. Nothing at all. Just stay there and do your deep breathing exercises. What can also help is to reprogram your mind by you know, doing a gratitude list daily and be appreciative. Be grateful of what you still have and less focus on the bad things, more focus on the good things. Do reach out to someone you trust, a phone call, a chat, a Zoom meeting uh, from your colleague, from your family member, even your loved one that relieves anxiety and depressive symptoms. And also, again, do call for a professional help. You don't have to do it alone. We can do it together. And uh, what you don't need to do is you don't watch too much news and social media. Man, I've been talking to so many people this week and a lot of us are unanimous that uh, news in the recent times are very negative and most of it we can not do anything about it we cannot control it and because of that we get frustrated and so you know you gotta be informed but not too overloaded so please please have a filter on what you watch you're already watching the news you're still on social media you don't need to watch and share everything that you read Especially if it's not going to be helpful or it would not make people feel good, pause the land. Okay, so uh, don't watch too much news on social media. And one last thing, please don't give up and lose hope. Uh, that's the last thing that you can do. We got to help ourselves and we got to help one another. And it's already a difficult time. We don't need to be difficult to one another. So please, uh, anybody out there watching, uh, feeling anxious and depressed or having a hard time, uh, don't give up. I won't give up on us. Don't lose hope. Uh, it will it will get better. It will get better. Hang on to hope that does not disappoint. Hang on to Jesus. And uh, it's great. I'm grateful that you're here with me because this is us hanging on to hope, and uh, hanging on to our faith over our fear. So recognize, resolve, and one last thing. You can choose to refer. What do I mean by refer? Meaning, you don't do it alone. And any burden shared is a burden lightened. We can do this together. Again, refer to a loved one. Refer to a professional. There are so many uh, lists of doctors, professionals out there who gives free consultation online. I have some of my clients, some of my colleagues. I, I take care of, uh, uh, of people aboard the vessels. And uh, they do refer to us when they need some help. Uh, we got some volunteer doctors. We got volunteer psychometricians uh, and psycho psychologists and psychiatrists. There's, you, you, you can help yourself. Google about it. It's there. It's right there. It's available. And uh, uh, you can refer to people. You can refer to DOH. There's a hotline that you can call if you're feeling very bad and you don't have any help. Uh, meaning... Uh, just active, activate the help button. We want to have a help-seeking behavior because the last thing on our mind is we, we have someone who's going through these physical, emotional, mental conditions and you're doing it alone. No, we're a family here. And so uh, saying this to you, uh, you can go to www.thefeastmallofasia.com. This is our uh, contact page. And there's a email there. You can send in your prayer requests and petitions. There's a there's a hotline that you can call, and uh, we can do as much as we can. And also, we will pray for you. That's the one thing for sure. You know, we you want to belong to a family, a spiritual family, because this is also spiritual warfare. This is not just a physical virus. This is also a spiritual thing. Meaning the fear, the fear, the anxiety, the depression, the 
uh, the the helplessness, hopelessness. It's also spiritual warfare and oppression. And so we can do this as one family. So so please please act, we're activating our website and our hotlines and our emails. And please feel uh, be in touch with us if you need some help uh, in any way. We'll we'll try to help you. We'll also try to link you to the people who can help you because we don't have the whole full solutions in our team but we have networks that we can refer you to so yeah so three steps again to take care of your health and well-being my dear friends number one recognize number two resolve and number three refer can you say that again recognize then you resolve it and then you refer it okay caveat you don't uh, you follow the three-step process you don't just immediately refer without you uh, you know, uh, resolving it on your own first or even recognizing you cannot skip a step at this one. But you can do simultaneous, simultaneous step. Like in the process of recognition, you cannot recognize it on your own, resolve it on your own, then you can activate it. But it's a it's a step-by-step -step process. So uh, I hope that I've made that clear that yes, we take care of ourselves, my body, my responsibility, my mind, my heart, my spirit, my responsibility. And then as we take care of ourselves, we get to take care of others. Recognize, resolve, and refer. One last thought as a doctor, and you know my practice is a holistic practice from the physical, emotional, mind, uh, and uh, also our spirit, our spiritual uh, side. I love this quote from Warren Buffett. He said, surround yourself with people that push you to do better. No drama or negativity, just higher goals and higher motivation. Good times and positive energy. No jealousy or hate. Simply bringing out the absolute best in each other. And I want to end with that. That's a very good ending in terms of, you know, linking up and doing it together. We can push ourselves to be better, wiser, stronger. We can bring out the best with one another. And so we do this. I, we know that uh, EZQ has been extended, uh, we got our hopes up, but now some people are feeling, again, disappointed, frustrated, but uh, oh, that's something we are not in control of. We can control what we can control. We can help as much as possible ourselves and then begin to think of others. Let's surround ourselves with the spiritual family that we may get to stay protected and stay connected. So that's me as your Dr. Didoy Lubata, the putting on my doctor hat on. And I hope that has been helpful. If it's helpful for you, please do share the word and share the uh, share the learnings. We'll try to put it in our social media pages also so that we can share it specifically this doctor's hat on. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your uh, you know participation. I know you're there. I know you're listening. So I hope that you could also uh, comment here where you're watching from so that I could notice, I could know, I can give a shout out if you want to. But uh, it's good that we, uh, I know who I'm talking to. So please, please uh, participate in our discussion, in our preaching today. And I know you're out there. And uh, so we're going to start, uh, restart again our series. We're going to continue a series called The Best Preaching Ever, Discover Our Path to Heaven. These are again lessons and inspiration from the book of Matthew. We're still in the Sermon of, of the Mount and by Jesus. And uh, I'm not going to start this preaching. We have Brother Dave finally giving us the Word of God. So here he is. Listen to the Word of God today. Good morning, Feast Small of Asia. Welcome home. Welcome to, well, our home literally, but this is not my house tour vlog. Well, I, I'd like to welcome you to our weekly family gathering. Welcome to Feast Small of Asia. Though we are online, uh, we want to greet everybody. Can I ask you a favor? Can you type on that comment section and greet everybody and tell them, welcome to the family. Come on, tell them, welcome to the family wherever you're watching this you may be at home at work for those frontliners you may not be in the philippines you may be around the world we just want to welcome you home and uh can you do me a favor again can you share this video so that your family friends can can join us in this beautiful sunday morning alam nyo na miss ko na to na miss ko kayo i'm happy i'm excited that i'm back preaching today na miss ko nang mag -coat. it's been a month of quarantine and uh 
Lagi lang ako nakapambahay. So at least now that I'm preaching, I'm preaching with Brother d today. Nakapag, nakapag-quote ako. I'd like, to have, uh, I'd like to say a special shout out. Dahil isang buwan ako nakakarantine, hindi ako nakapagpagupit. So I'd like to say a special shout out and I love you to my wife for cutting my hair. Okay naman, no? Mag- mukhang okay naman. And uh, <laughs> hey, if this is your first time, Welcome to Feast Small Elevation. My name is Dave. Pag first time mo to, pwede pa mag-comment ka dun sa comment section na it's your first time so that the whole family can can uh, can say hi and can and can greet you. Thank you so much for joining us in this beautiful beautiful Sunday morning. <clears throat> Nagbibinata ako. Uh, you know, we might be separated uh but by distance, by physically, we might be separated physically, but but here's what I believe, we nothing Nothing can stop us from gathering together in spirit in order to worship God and, and just soak in His presence and listen to His message for us today. Amen? I can't hear you. Amen? Are you ready to be blessed today? Are you ready for God's message for you today? Are you? Yes, we are ready. If you are ready, you know, you, you know the drill. If this is your first time, pray with us as we pray I, our favorite prayer here at the feast as one family in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit today i receive all of god's love for me today i open myself to the unbound limitless overflowing abundance of god's universe today i open myself to god's blessings healing and miracles today i open myself to god's word so i become more like jesus every day Today I proclaim, I am God's beloved, I am God's servant, I am God's powerful champion, and because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, Amen. If you have your Bibles with you, can we, can we bring out our Bibles and, uh, ayan o, oh, may araw na, can we, can we bring out our Bibles and, and just in reverence to the Word as we sing, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Speak to us today, Lord. Your, your servant is listening. Thank you so much, Jesus. You know, we are still in, uh, if, if you're new here, we are still in talk five of this beautiful series entitled best preaching ever and in this series we explore the sermon of the mount and you might be wondering teka nga bakit pa sermon of the mount on title na to you know why uh well simply because the writer says so simply because matthew says so walang pasagan ng trip yun yung title niya sa kwento na to and uh, and before kung kukutitignan mo matthew is saying before jesus preached he went out he went out. No, he went up to the mountain. And uh, this might just be a simple story for, for, for some. But this is actually Matthew trying to trying to drive a point. If you if you remember uh, Holy Week Kaka Holy Week lang and alam yung pag Holy Week ng bata ako ang laging ang laging laman ng TV eh, yung lumang Ten Commandments and 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 uh, uh, that's my tip to you guys kung bakit ito yung sinabi ni Matthew that Jesus went up to the mountain question where did Moses got the law the Ten Commandments saan niya nakuha i can't hear you type it there saan yeah you got it he 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 went up to mount sinai and dun niya nakuha yung Ten Commandments. And you might be you might be wondering, bro, anong connect nito? Anong connect? Uh, you know, uh, by, by Moses, Moses telling telling the readers of, of the gospel that, hey, Jesus went up to the mountain. This is Moses declaring to the world that Jesus is the new Moses. That Jesus is the new Moses. Nung sinabi niya na Jesus went up to the mountain, he is declaring Jesus is the new Moses. And Jesus has the authority. And that is why Jesus will dig deeper into this lost and reveal the deeper meaning of this lost. You know, Matthew used 
a familiar story to 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 his readers. Remember, Matthew, uh, ang target audience ni Matthew was were, were the Jews who knew their Old Testament, who knew their history, who knew their laws. So ginamit na yung ginamit na yung familiar story na yon to to drive to drive a very important point. I want you to get your Bibles and I want you to open it to our reading for today. It's in uh, Matthew chapter five verse 21 i'll give you time to to get your bibles to go to matthew chapter 5 as we read this together are you ready all right matthew chapter 5 verse 21 you have heard that people were told in the past do not commit murder anyone who does will be brought to trial but now i tell you jesus said if you are angry with your brother you will be brought to trial. Ops, teka lang. Nagalit ka na ba? Lahat naman tayo si Govan nagalit. No? So this, this word is, this message, this word is for, for all of us. Let me continue. If you call your brother you good for nothing, you will be brought before the council. And if you call your brother worthless fool, you will be in, in, oh, grabe to. You will be in danger of going to the fire of hell. So if you are about to offer your gift to God at the altar, and there you remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. Go at once and make peace with your brother. And then come back and offer your gifts to God. If someone brings a lawsuit against you, and takes you to court, settle the dispute while there is time. Everybody say settle. Settle. Settle the dispute while there is time. Before you get to court, once you're there, you will be turned over to the judge who will hand you over to the police and you will be put in jail. There you will stay, I tell you, until you pay the last penny of your fine. Ooh, interesting reading. Alam nyo, pag titignan nyo to, our reading for today started with this. You have heard that people were told in the past. That's Jesus saying that. And then he goes on by saying, but now I tell you. Let me break down this for you a bit. Parang sinasabi ni, parang sinasabi ni Jesus, Narinig nyo na tong sinabi before, pero ito yung sinasabi ko ngayon. Do, do, do you get this? I'd like you to take note of that pattern. Kasi itong pattern na to, Jesus used this pattern six times in this whole Sermon of the Mount. And we will deal with each with each each of those in the next coming weeks. Six times. Siguro ganun ka importante. Jesus was saying, narinig nyo na to, pero ito yung sasabihin ko. This I say to you. Uh, pag sinabi ba niyang, but I say this to you, does that mean kinocontradict niya yung old law? Kinocontradict niya si Moses? Well, does not, that is not the case. He is not contradicting Moses. In fact, he is just deeping, he is just diving deeper, going deeper into the law to, to bring out the real meaning of the law. Are you with me? I want you to sabi ko kanina, I want you to take note of that of that pattern because it's used by Jesus six times in explaining six laws. Anim, yung una is the law on uh, uh, the law on anger, uh, the law on the law on murder and then the law on uh, adultery, pangatlo the law on divorce and then yung oaths, revenge and uh Hating your enemy is yung pang-anim. And if you look at carefully, if you've been listening very carefully, itong anim na to, this deals with relating to each other. Na, what's mo? Oh, beautiful sunlight. Deals with, uh, uh, it, it talks about how we deal with each other. And it's just telling us that, you know, this is a big deal to God. How we deal with each other is important to God. And, you know, ito yung ginagawa ni Jesus eh. Ito yung ginagawa ni Jesus. He is, he is, may onion ka ba dyan sa bahay? Uh, nakalimutan ko magdala. Pero alam mo yung pag, pag when, when you, 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 when you peel the onion in order for it to be, to para makita mo yung loob, this is what Jesus is saying. This is what Jesus was doing. He's trying to peel out the outer uh, wrap 
of this loss to reveal God's heart in this loss. And we will talk about the different, different loss in the coming weeks. Uh, that's why I want you to hold on and join us every single Sunday. But today we're going to talk about specifically on the first law, the law on murder. Oh, good one. Interesting, the law on murder. Oops, take lang. Don't change your channel. Wag ka mag offline. Uh, this message is for you and me. Para sa atin to. And uh, as we dig deeper into this law, uh, we will be joined later by our builder. But uh, can I can I can I invite you to to pray with me? Let's pray together. Let's uh, bow down our heads and close our eyes and uh, and let's let's pray. Father in heaven, we come before you today with uh, in times of crisis like this, we we stay still. We stay still. And we today we declare that this is a divine appointment between you and me. Lord, we open our hearts today, we open our eyes today, we open our ears today to your message, O God. Transform us today, bless us today, speak to us today. This we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's raise up our Bibles together as we sing. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Let's give God a club offering. Amen and amen. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. And to it's my honor to, to, to dig deeper into this message. Let us welcome our builder brother Didoy Lubaton. Thank you so much, brother Dave. Bagong gupet at bagong uh, fresh preaching from you. Thank you for sharing us the word. At nahiya naman nako, kaya nagkot na rin nako. <laughs> and uh, beautiful word. And uh, today we're gonna be talking about anger. Nagalit ka na ba? Nainis ka na ba? Gusto mo na bang pisilin yung pimple nung kasama mo dyan? Anger. And uh, one big message for today is this. God's love is bigger than your anger. God's love is bigger than your anger. Kahit gaano pa kalaki yung galit mo, mas malaki pa rin ang pagmamahal sa iyo ng Panginoon. Amen. One day, uh, may nakausap ako uh, in my work with the sea pairs na alaman niya, "Doc, brother, dito ka din pala sa feast." Sabi niya, "Opo." Sabi niya, "Alam mo, sagal na po ako din nagsisimba." Sabi ko, "Bakit?" Ah, mabait naman po kasi ako. Hindi po ako mamamatay tao. <laughs> well, tama naman siya na mabait siya na hindi siya mamamatay, mamamatay tao. But uh, I think not killing anyone is uh, one of the, you know, very bad uh, definition of a good person. Kasi it's like saying, imagine, for hire, a salesman, qualification, basta hindi mamamatay tao. <laughs> okay, ah, uh, Uh, a, a woman praying for her husband mga singles dyan meron ba mga singles dyan huwag niyong sasama to Lord give me a person who's tall dark and handsome just like brother Dave <laughs> at kung pwede yung hindi po mamamatay tao Amen <laughs> I, I believe that human beings are better than this and that is what Jesus is telling to us today taas ang kamay ng mga nagalit na Taas ng kamay ng mga nagtanim ng mga galit. I'm one with you. Welcome to the family. But Jesus is telling us today, you are better than this. Say to the persons around you, you are better than this. Can you comment it there? You are better than this. Let's talk about the first law that Jesus unwrapped in our readings. Open up your Bibles, Matthew 5 uh, uh, verse 21. And he said, You have heard that our ancestors were told, You must not murder. If you commit murder, you are subject to judgment. But I say, If you are even angry with someone, you are subject to judgment. If you call someone an idiot, 
you are in danger of being brought before the court. And if you curse someone, you are in danger of the fires of hell. Look at the words, guys. Fires of hell, court, judgment, murder. And it's kasama dun yung anger. So imagine how the gravity of our anger is all associated with those words. Jesus was uncovering God's heart about this law. And he says, it's not about murder. It's about unrighteous anger. It's not about killing someone, but it's, also, it's about unrighteous anger. And this is scary because you might ask, so is anger equal to murder? May I ask you, how many times did you get angry last week? This week? How many times? With the past few days? How many times na nainis ka sa galit because you... You know, yung, yung, yung kapitbahay mo violates social distancing. At yung kapitbahay mo, madaling araw na, nagkakaraoke pa din. Hindi <laughs> ka makatulog. Aba, bakit sila lang? Bakit sila ganon? And how many times did you get angry with our politicians o kaya kay mayor kahit wala silang ginagawa? A joke lang. Joke lang yun na. I don't wanna be political. But <laughs> we have hardworking people in the government too. And uh, iba nagsasabi, mayor, mayor, <laughs> baka naman. <laughs> Seriously, how many times did you get angry at your kids? Dahil sa kulit nila, how many times na nainis ka sa teenager mo kasi wala na ibang ginawa kundi mag-tiktok? Diba? How many times did you get angry with your parents? Kasi kahit ECQ, labas pa rin ng labas. O kaya... Kung yung iba, naka-Instagram, naka-Twitter, at naka-TikTok, yung mga, yung, mga, yung mga parents mo, hindi mo na makausap dahil kaka-Facebook, tapos lahat na lang nang nakikita niyang balita, share! Kahit fake news! <laughs> How many times did we get angry last week? So the question is, is anger always wrong? Ay, sample ano pa? Yung nagalit ka na ba? How many times did you get angry for a friend? Na nangutang sa'yo? Tapos, ang tagal-tagal na, inaantay mo siyang magbayad, mag-isa. Tapos, hindi mo siya siningil-singil. Tapos, minsan siningil mo, at sabi niya, ah, talaga, nakalimutan ko na yan eh. Ah, ganun? Dapat may interest pa yung bayad mo dyan. <laughs> I'm sure you're asking, is anger always wrong? And the answer is, no! Not, not at all. Or else, even Jesus wouldn't have gotten angry at the temple. Remember that? Yung, yung nagkalit siya sa templo, the holy place of the, Jew, of the Jews. He was so enraged that the, the anger was directed to the practice of the rich priests who were so corrupt that they manipulated the system so that it will favor them to earn money from simple people so that they could live a luxurious life. And so, Jesus, by example, na okay naman magalit. Feeling angry is normal. Feeling angry is not sinful. Let me say that again. Feeling angry is normal. Feeling angry is not sinful. Sinful. So, may mga huminga ng malam dyan. Pwede naman pala. Oo naman. Feel the feeling of anger. If you don't recognize it, you don't resolve it. Uh, we will just, you know, hihimayin natin what anger is and what it could do for us in the positive side rather than on the negative side. Again, feeling angry is normal. Feeling angry is not sinful. And that's why St. Paul said this in Ephesians 4 verse 26. It says, In your anger, do not sin. Oh, pwedeng magalit. Huwag ka lang magkasala dahil sa galit mo. And that means uh, you can be angry... Uh, you can be angry that sinful, that could be sinful. They could also be angry that is not sinful. Because there's a huge difference between angry feelings and angry actions. Okay? Can I say that? Angry feelings and angry actions. So let's talk about the angry feelings first. Okay? Angry feelings. You can compare angry feelings like a, a gate crasher uh, that goes into your party. Imagine mo, in a party, your front door is open and all your guests, you're welcoming. And then somebody not invited or an intruder walks in, went straight to the food, kain lang ng kain. E, e, you know, the fact is this. You cannot control 
anger's entrance. But you can control your anger's exit. Oh, ganda no na. Hindi mo mapipigilang magalit. Pero you can control what happens to you when you're angry. Kung paano sa palabas sa sarili mo. Again, at a certain point, you must walk up to the gate crasher and say, Hey, kilala ba kita? Parang hindi ka invited dito ah. You need, you need to... Kailangan mo siyang... Kailangan mo siyang, you know, find something about your feelings. You find out more about your feelings and say, Why am I angry? Bakit ako triggered? Why, why do you need to sit with your anger in the presence of God and discern where it comes from? Where is the root of that anger? But ka trigger. Ano yung button ang napupush sa sarili mo? Because, the, because of these two facts of anger. Number one, again, let's say, find out more about your feelings. Because your feelings are the root programming of why you are angry. So reason number one, anger is usually a mask of fear. Anger is only a secondary emotion. Beneath a lot of people's anger, it's fear. Takot. You're angry because you're afraid. You're angry because hindi ko to kilala. Baka ko anong gawin nito sa akin. You're angry because minamaliit ako nito. O kaya ang pa- pumapangit ang reputasyon ko dahil sa tao na to. Kaya ka nagagalit. You are afraid. You're angry because you're feeling abandoned. You're feeling rejected. You're, fa- you're feeling more insecure because of a person. You're feeling small, inadequate, and humiliated. Again, find out more about your feelings because anger is usually a secondary uh, secondary uh, emotion. Many times, anger is a mask. Okay? Uh, parang face mask or whatever mask that you try to put it up there. Because the reason why you can't get rid of your anger is because you haven't admitted to the fear. Hindi mo maamin sa sarili mo na you're feeling secure. Hindi mo maamin sa sarili mo na sobrang taas ng care mo sa reputation mo. Uh, you're, you're high on what people would say to you. Remember that what you feel, you can heal. What you can recognize, you can resolve. If you haven't felt fear yet, how can you bring it to God for healing? Let me say that again. When what you can feel, you can feel. So what can you deny na nasaktan ka? Aminin mo na sa sarili mo. Aminin mo that you felt bad. Because the moment that you do not recognize, the moment you deny your feelings, you deny your own personal dignity also. You gotta be you. And if it triggers you, then understand why you're triggered. But don't say, hindi naman ako nagagalit, pero ang taas ng BP mo. Ang sama, yung hinga mo parang para kang dragon pero hindi wala, wala, wala. in denial ang, ang, ang pasyente na in denial sa symptoms niya hindi gagaling yan kasi nga hindi mo mare-resolve pag hindi mo ma-recognize so here's what you need to do you gotta feel the fear before God you gotta say to God na it is ako Lord Rah! Pwede kang mag-leon, pwede kang mag-tigre, pwede kang mag-dragon kay Lord. Kaya ni Lord yan. Because it's God, it's God's love that will take away our fear. Perfect love casts out fear. And when fear is cast out, when fear goes away, the anger that is the secondary emotion goes away too. Again, feel the fear before God. Not before your husband, wife, brother, sister, kid, it before God. Si Lord kaya yan. Baka yung mga kasamahan mo sa buhay, hindi ka kayanin. Okay? Reason number two. Anger comes first from fear. Second, anger comes from either hurt or immaturity. There are two kinds of angry people. The There are angry people who are angry because they got hurt. They suffered injustice. Someone did them wrong. Na ano ka ng ibang tao. But I've also met angry people who are angry not because they got hurt, but because things did not go their way. Parang sign of immaturity yan. Para kang toddler or para kang bata na hindi nasunod yung gusto mo, kaya ka nagagalit. Para ka nag, nagtatantrum. This person has not emotionally grown up. 
and that person lives in a you know in a bubble a fantasy bubble uh, where he needs to control people bullying controlling galit minsan we use the galit para lang masunod yung gusto natin and that's not a spiritually or emotionally mature thing to do again reason number two aside from coming from fear reason is it comes from either hurt or immaturity someone did them wrong and you know uh, selfishness points out that says things didn't go their way but whatever your reason is why you're angry you must learn to let it go you don't let mr anger stay overnight in your house in your well-being after feeling the anger and feeling the primary uh, feeling beneath the anger which is usually fear uh, it's time to let it go let it go speaking words of wisdom let it go <laughs> so to continue to continue my analogy about the great gate crasher you know you gotta uh, you, you can find more about that gate crasher and then really identify your feelings and then you gotta let them go like you said oh eh, parang uh, nakilala mo na, na hindi mo talaga siya kilala and then say oh, you gotta let go you gotta go you're not uh, you're not part of this party you gotta you know it's nice meeting you but uh, we have our own private thing and then you'll escort that person to the exit door meaning palalabasin mo Saint, Saint Paul said this, Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. In other words, don't let Mr. Anger stay overnight. Yung iba kasi dyan, some people, Mr. Anger, the angry feelings, is a permanent resident. Sampung taon na, baon na baon, galit na galit, namumunga na ng sakit. Sa katawan, sa puso, sa isipan, sakit sa pera. You know, overnight na complete with the barangay ID and the quarantine pass ngayon. You know, may, may sarili siyang lugar sa, sa, sa buhay mo. Tama na. Don't let the sun go down while you're still angry. Don't, don't let it stay. It becomes toxic to your well-being. So you gotta stop feeding your anger. If you continue to feed your anger, it will grow. It will bear fruit. You gotta cut it off. You gotta stop feeding your anger. Stop feeding it with your attention, with your time, and with your energy. Mauubos ka dyan. Kaya siguro pagod na pagod ka. Kasi matagal ka nang naano ng ibang tao. Pero ang tagal-tagal mo nang dinadala yung excess baggage na yan. Kaya nga siya tawag na excess baggage eh. Kasi ex na. Tapos na. Huwag mo nang dalhin. You can feel it. Find more about it. Let it go to God. Not just carry it for the rest of your life. We feed it by, you know, we, we feed our, your, our anger by playing all over again the mental video of hurt. Many times a day. Stop feeding your anger. Stop replaying that negative mental movie. What you can do is to switch to a new mental movie in your mind that you can replay and replay and replay. So, for example, this story. One man, uh, a man came up to uh, a, a priest and asked, Can you help me? Uh, you know, someone hurt me and I cannot get rid of my anger. And then this priest, wise priest, nodded his head and surprised the man by telling him a joke. And the joke was so funny that tawang tawang tawa siya, humahalakak siya ng sobrang lakas. And then the, 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 the priest again told that same joke to the person right after. And then after a few seconds, yung, ta, yung, yung, yung tawang tawa na tao, tumawa na lang ng nakasmile. Tapos ang ginawa pa rin ng pare, isa pa, inulit niya yung same joke the third time. But this time, the man was just smiling again and parang less na ang response niya. And that's one that's when the priest said to this person, why is it that we don't laugh at the same joke over and over and over again? But we cry at the same hurt over and over again. Chew on that. Try try to get that in your system. Why do we keep on replaying, you know, ang mga bagay-bagay na hindi nakakatawa na? 
So we can stop feeding our anger. Stop replaying that mental video that feeds your anger. You can seek help from pastors, priests, from spiritual community. You can seek help from professionals. And we need to stop that video. Because if you keep, keep on watching that negative mental video, it will continue to feed your anger. You know, you gotta change your movie playlist. Baka nga iba, para kang may isang buong Netflix dyan ng database ng mga negativity, negative videos. So you gotta watch a new movie. You gotta start dreaming again. You gotta start God's movie for your life. You, you, you look at your dream board. You look at your gratitude list. Look at your personal blessings now. Think about how you can also paint a picture and look at the mental movie on how, despite being hurt, we can become wounded healers to other people. In the feast, we ask prayers from one another. And, uh, you know, may mga kwento ganito eh, that uh, someone, let's say a female naman, uh, would say, I've been, I've been, for the past four years, been so angry at my neighbor. I cannot even seem to move on. And she explained why. And, uh, <laughs> bakit po paulit-ulit ang sama pa rin ng loob ko? Bakit hindi ko malit ko? You know, your anger makes you feel superior. You feel in control. That's why you keep your anger in your heart. But here's the reality. As long as you keep your anger alive, continue feeding that anger towards your neighbor, you are the puppet of this neighbor. Susunod-sunod ka sa feelings mo against that neighbor. Through your anger, you're given, you know, you've given your neighbor strings to control you. She or that person is in control of your, of your life. It's so hard to really think about it. But if you really, 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 really think about it, that's true. Your anger controls you instead of you controlling your anger. And many times, the consequences are so negative and sometimes fatal. I know of someone, root cause of that person's cancer is because galit na galit na galit na galit na galit siya sa isang person for the longest time. She was free for so long, but ever since she got that negative incident and nagtanim siya ng galit for the next five years, every single day, napaka-negative niya. And then, namunga. May mataas na BP, nagkaroon ng lump sa breast. I'm saying that anger is uh, the one that we need to kill. It's some Anger is not good for our health. I urge you to cut it off. Cut the negativity. Cut the strings of your puppeteer. Let go of your anger. And you, you might say, easier said than done, Dr. Didoy. I can, uh, yes, definitely. But I will really say to you, it will not be an easy time if you don't. You let it go. You let God do the rest. Sometimes we keep our anger because we have vengeance. But the Word of God says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. And give it to God. We cannot handle, it's like an acid. We cannot hold it with our bare hands for a long, long time. Or else, matutunaw tayo, matutunaw ang pangarap, matutunaw yung positivity, matutunaw ang productivity mo. Bigay mo na kay Lord. Kaya ni Lord hawakan yan. Hindi mo kaya yan hawakan for the longest time. So, let's now talk on the other side of the coin. Una, angry feelings. This one, the other side, is angry actions. So, angry feelings are different from angry actions. Have you ever asked yourself, Lord, why did you give us the capacity to be angry? Kung ginawa mo na rin naman din kami, at ginawa mo kami ng maganda at maayos at beautiful, Lord, bakit may ganito pa kaming feelings? And here's the answer. Because anger could be used for good. Anger is fuel. That's true. Anger gives you the energy to right what's wrong, to rescue victims, and to defend the defenseless. Anger is fuel. Let me give you an example. I'll show you a picture. Here is a picture of the great divide between people. And this is relevant now. May mga naka you na komportable komportable sa bahay. And that's okay. And you've secured yourselves. That's really good. Nice for you. But there are also out there 
who are people who are suffering. People who, you know, how... <laughs> Natawa ko minsan because I, I needed to drive around. Makita ko, bakit ang daming tao dito sa lugar na to? And then I realized, wala naman kasi talaga silang pupuntaan sa loob ng bahay. Their house is just napakaliit. So wala silang, wala silang magagawa but to really just, you know, lakad-lakad konti. Kasi it, it's like a prison inside their house. And this makes me angry. This one, I, I'm angry about the situation of others. And it allows us to do something about it. That's why here in the face, pero na tayo movement of uh, you know to to fund charities. Hashtag the feasts little acts of love. And we've been feeding the poor for the past few weeks, and we're grateful that we get to do it together. And I, as your builder, I'm saying this to you. I cannot preach like this and not think of those people who are suffering. This preaching is not just for us to make. To feel good. This preaching enables us to move into action and help those who are helpless. Give hope to those who are hopeless. So yes, you can use anger for good. But you can also use it for bad too. I am angry uh, as a doctor in a sense that I see people suffering because of sickness. And I, I went through sickness, uh, uh, through my dad's sickness for a long time and we really suffered. And when I became a doctor, I realized, you know, it's not just about medicine. Yes, medicine plays a role, but I, you, you, it fueled me that uh, meron palang well-being, not just physical health. And the well-being determines your lifestyle, determines your habits, which influences your physical health. So me, as a holistic doctor, I don't just look at your physical symptoms. I look into your root causes of why you're sick. Because if you don't recognize the deep, 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 deep feelings and root causes of your sickness and your habits, you will just continue to get sick. You can get, you know, a little relief from your symptoms because of medicines, but if you don't heal from the root causes, you cannot resolve it fully. So, anger. Maybe you felt my anger a little bit as I'm explaining this to you. But I'm saying, I use it on a positive side. Use it for good. And I use it as a few will. You know, in, in my practice now in the in the maritime health, um <laughs> sa po na sa situation na oo nga no, dahil kailangan pa rin tumakbo ng goods all around the world. There are seafarers who who really have to stay on board a little longer and, and sometimes it breaks their mental health and sometimes it hurts them too. But who cares for them? And so that's why, sa amin, in our little clinic, we, were, we, we, we are now able to activate a little bit of telemedicine where our vessels all around the world could call us and we get to talk to them and we get to ex- uh, listen to them and then alleviate their feelings and, you know, <sighs> anger could be used for good. Anger is energy. Where you put the energy makes the difference. We gotta watch our words. Let's read again what Jesus said from Matthew 5, verse 21 to 22. It says, uh, you, If you call someone an idiot, you are in danger of being brought to the court. And if you cur- curse someone, you are in danger of the fires of hell. Here, Jesus is talking about getting angry. He's not talking about just by being angry, but what you do when you get angry. Again, I repeat, being angry is normal. Feel your feelings. But do you act on your anger and it becomes destructive? Do you insult? Do you curse? Do you gossip? Do you demean people? Do you slander? Do you bully someone? And that is acting out of anger. Again, you know, Jesus' angry words can be as serious as murder because poisonous words can kill. Can I say that again? First, poisonous words can kill. They can kill someone's spirit. They can kill someone's dreams. They can kill someone's reputation. And in my practice, I, I see this a lot that, you know, this person is not dreaming 
and, and cannot help himself or herself. Why? Because so many people, even the parents of this person, have been saying, wala ka talaga kwenta, wala ka magandang matupuntahan, wala, pagtanda mo, mamamatay ka na lang. It really happens. Poisonous words. Siguro, you know, sticks and stones may not break my bones, but words will never hurt me. No way. Words hurt us more. Kasi yung, yung nabale na bone mo, it will heal in a couple of months. Pero pag nabasag yung spirito mo, yung mental state mo, it goes long and long and eventually will kill you. Poisonous words can kill. But here's one more thing that you need to remember. Poisonous words thrown at another person can kill that other person. But let me remind you but it, that those poisonous words also kills the speaker. Not, not, not me, sana, but it also kills the one who's giving, who's saying those poisonous words. Because the universe has a law. It's ruled by certain spiritual laws. And one of them is the law of reciprocity. The law of reciprocity means you get what you give. If you curse someone, the curse goes back at you, sometimes worse. If you give someone love, love will come running back at you. Jesus said, you are defiled by the words that come out of your mouth. Matthew 15 verse 11. And Jesus was so serious, he even gave a very stern warning. He said, if you curse, you are in danger of the fires of hell. Grabe, no? Speaking because you're angry, shouting because you're angry, bullying, demeaning, hurting someone could bring you to the fires of hell. You know, sana lang gising-gising tayo sa real words of the truth from the Word of God. It's so true. There are so many people out there who are living miserable lives because they're angry. Their hatred for someone has brought them to an experience of hell hell here on earth and sometimes most of it is actually self-inflicted marami kakatawa minsan lahat ng tao nakamove on na ikaw hindi pa and so you're hitting the dagger to yourself if you continue to keep that poisonous anger in your well-being so if you're angry and you want to curse someone say a quiet prayer and stop as much you can. And then breathe. Inhale God's love and say, God bless you. And that powerful blessing will bounce back at you. Dati, naiinis ako mga drivers out there. Minsan, pag may mga kasabayan ka na mag-drive, tapos biglang, you know, kinat ka, o kaya munti ka na baga, anak ng tipok, ah, gusto mong marahin. Tapos galit na galit ka. Tapos dati, ginagawa ko, gano'n na yung ko pa yan, gagit-gitin ko pa. Eh di na si Ray Arrow ko. <laughs> eh di inaway ako ng sama ko. <laughs> eh di muntik pang masira yung kotse ko. So I put myself in danger because because of anger. Anger is danger. Di ba? Letter D lang ang difference. Anger is danger. It's very dangerous. What can we do? What can we do? Jesus said this. Matthew 5 verse 23 to 24. We got to reconcile with God. And as we reconcile with God, we reconcile with man. 23 to 24, it says, So if you are presenting a sacrifice at the altar in the temple and you suddenly remember that someone has something against you, leave your sacrifice there at the altar. Go and be reconciled to that person. Then come and offer your sacrifice to God. Isn't, isn't it interesting how Jesus said it? You suddenly remember that someone has something against you. He didn't say, you remember that you have something against someone. Ganda. Yeah. <laughs> he wasn't not just, he, he, he was not just talking about being angry at someone. He was talking about all our broken relationships because of our anger. God is really totally serious about healing our human relationships. And you know, what I'm about to say now is very obvious to the Jews, but sometimes we miss it. Jews were required by the law of Moses to offer a number of temple sacrifices each year. 
And the first purpose of this sacrifice was to reconcile with God. Ito po yung alay ko, Panginoon, bati na tayo. Please forgive me for my sins. So basically, Jesus was saying to everyone, how can you reconcile with God if you're not reconciled with another human being? St. John said the same thing from 1 John verse 4, uh, chapter 4, verse 20. It, it, it says, If someone says, I love God, but hates a fa- fellow believer, that person is a liar. Sinungaling. For if we do not love people we can see, how can we love God whom we cannot see? It's all rooted in Genesis. And it says us, every human being is a God carrier. Every human being carries the face of God. Kahit yung kinaiin ni Salmo. Kahit yung people that you consider as your adversary and enemy. Guys, I'm preaching this to myself. And I know this is also hitting us. Hitting you as you re- listen to this. But there is hope. There is hope. But at this point, I want to do some Q&A with you. Some practical tayo ngayon. I'm sure there are so many questions that you know it's going around your head and uh, let's answer some of the common ones so q a for example brother doc didoy she doesn't want to reconcile with me the answer as long as you've done all that you can to reconcile then that's okay you're okay if the other person doesn't want to reconcile you she is accountable to god he or she is accountable to god do your part as much as you can. And if the person does not respond, Lord, alam ko ikaw na ang Another question. How can I forgive him? He has, he hasn't asked for forgiveness. Ayan, naku, sarap pag-usapan ito. Paano mo ba patawa? Di naman namingin ng tawa. Ilam mo, forgiveness. Remember, remember this. Forgiveness is a gift that you give to yourself first. And you don't want to be scrimpy on your on the gift to yourself. You need that gift for freedom. Why will, will you, why will you depend on you, why will you depend your freedom on someone else's decision? You can decide to be free today. I pray that the love of God would fill you right now. The mercy, the compassion of God would fill you up right now. Today is your freedom day. You're hearing this talk for a particular reason. You can let go now of your anger. You can give it to God. You can lift it to God. And God is setting you free right now. Amen. Third question. Doc, but, you know, he... You know, that person does not deserve to be forgiven, you know. Hindi niya, hindi niya deserve na, pa, uh, na patawa rin siya. Yeah, but that's the, the answer is this. That's the core definition of mercy. Mercy is forgiving someone who doesn't deserve to be forgiven. If he deserves it, we don't call it mercy. And I'm grateful for mercy. Because there are so many times that I do not deserve the forgiveness of God. But He still forgives me. I, I've confessed so many times, so many grievous sin, sins. But the priests represented, God represented through the priest, always gives an absolution and gives hope. Even if I'm a sinner, a repeated sinner. Some people would ask, Brother Doc, paano kung... You know, my father died before I could ask for forgiveness. And when he died, we were not in speaking terms. Una kong sabihin sa way, I can feel you. A week before my dad passed away, I went back to school in Spain, <laughs> in UST. And bago ako malis, medyo nag kami. And I never got to reconcile with my father face to face again. I, I found him in the hospital then. And here's my answer. Ask Jesus to be your peacemaker. Ask Jesus to take your offer of reconciliation to that person. It will happen. And Jesus is the greatest peacemaker. And I've done that. I've done that. I've talked to Jesus. I've also talked to my father in some way. Father Bob uh, would, would, would do this. Write everything that you want to say to that person. Go to the grave and then say everything. 
Say your peace there. And then end, end it with a prayer, receiving the peace, love, and mercy of God. And then believe that Jesus will make it happen. Some people would feel this way. I still cannot forgive my father. I still cannot forgive that person who hurt me the most. And my answer to that is, it's okay. It's okay. Forgiveness is a process. If you cannot forgive that person, now start by praying, Lord, help me to forgive. Can you say that with me? Lord, help me to forgive. That prayer is enough for God to start your healing journey. That prayer is allowing yourself to start the healing and recovery process. God will help you to forgive. God of mercy will help you to have mercy to yourself and to others. Some people would feel this way. My ex said, if I truly have forgiven him, we should get together again. Is he right? No way. <laughs> Forgiven, forgiving doesn't mean automatically you go back to the same level of relationship you had before. Trust that is broken needs to be restored and earned. It's possible that you forgive your you know, boyfriend's unfaithfulness, or you know trauma you had from your boyfriend but you can decide that you cannot trust him anymore forgiving each other and going back as partners are two separate discussions and decisions so not necessarily you can choose to have a distance a personal space a safety distance so that you know you will give yourself time to heal and recover and so we're about to pray now but as Jesus said, before you reconcile with God, let's pray that He gives us the power to reconcile with others. I want you, right now, I want you to, I want you to think of the people that have hurt you. People na naiinis ka. Sige na, it's okay. You don't have to say who they are. Just, just right here. Look at my face. Look, look. And I want you to be true to yourself. Feel your feelings. Galit ka ba? Kanino? From 1 to 10, gano ka kagalit? It's okay to recognize it. Remember that God's love is bigger than your anger. And so, we can be angry, but we don't need to sin. Nainis ka ba ngayon? Meron ka pa rin bang kinaiinisan noon noon na? And you recognize now na, oh nga, no? I'm so, I'm so in prison because of my anger. I'm so fatigued already because of carrying this excess baggage in the journey of life. Or you begin to recognize, oh, ano, okay palang magalit. Okay palang to recognize. Hindi ko alam na, you know, na-influence ako ng anger ko towards a person. It's okay. So I hope you're there. I want you to pray with me now. And I need you to have faith. Lord, increase our faith as we do this process now. Let's close our eyes. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As you close your eyes, ask God to give you the grace, the strength to forgive, Receive God's mercy first so you could give mercy to others. I want you to think of their faces and feel the feelings again. It's okay. We are in the presence of God. You're safe. I sense that God is renewing you now. God is restoring everything that we lost. We believe that God heals us all. So as you imagine their faces, remember that they are God carriers. They belong to the family of God. Even with the disputes that we have with them. Mahal sila ng Panginoon. Kahit hindi mo na sila mahal. Today, 
you can decide. You can choose to be free again. Set yourself free from the bondage of anger. Or maybe that anger is directed to yourself too. And in the mighty name of Jesus, receive the love of God. Receive healing. Receive His grace and mercy. Be free. In the name of Jesus, you are all setting us free, God. Jesus Christ. Through the work of the Holy Spirit in our homes right now, you are setting us free from the burden of anger. And you are replacing it with your peace. Oh, we receive your peace, Jesus. We receive your peace. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to put your heart, your hand to your heart right now. And pray this prayer with me. Lord, I want you to forgive. Help me to forgive. Start the healing process now. Restart it again. Heal my broken heart. Heal my broken relationships. And today, I receive your healing love, which is bigger than my fears and my anger. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing a reflection song. I know you know this song. Sing with me. There's one. 
pulsing anger with your peace. We receive your healing love today. We also pray as one community for peace all around the world. There's so much confusion now, God. But we can start from within. And from the peace that we receive from you, it's the same peace that we're going to give to our family, to our community, to our country, and to all of humanity. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your peace. Thank you for your healing. Thank you, Jesus. If you believe it, just comment it. Thank you, Jesus, for your peace. Thank you for your healing. We're going to proceed more to one more worship song. We receive and we give. Let us be our prayer. In Jesus' name. Here in the moment I'll surrender my fire. Your perfect love consuming my sin and pride. I'm out of hiding now. I'm found by your grace. saved I receive this life by your cross I've been set free you are everything you are enough for me you're all I need here in the breaking of the new dawn I find a life and shake and fall With all I am, with all my brain. 
receive your love. We receive your love. Let this be a spiritual connection between us now. As we raise up our hands, we're claiming this in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Say it again. I receive your love. I receive your love. By your grace I have been saved. I receive this love. By your cross I've been set free. You are everything. You are love for me. You're all I need. Thank you, Lord. Give the Lord His praise. Give the Lord His giving in your heart. Hallelujah. Jesus, thank you guys for joining uh, us again. Come, come, come. Come here, come on. It's okay. And so, uh, as your builder, just want to give a few announcements. But uh, on top of my list, I'd like to update you on our hashtag, The Feast, Little Acts of Love. And this is our update of our total giving. Mai, can you give the announcements? Here, come. That's okay. Go. Around 265,668.35 pesos, 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 pesos. Thank you, Jesus. Well, uh, we were able to feed 370 families. Wow. Yay. Thank you, Jesus. Imagine that the poorest among the poor gets to feed because uh, we bridge the gap. <laughs> and as, uh, as mentioned before, we, we buy the food from the farmers. And we put it on a truck, uh, so you'll see here in the boxes, uh, through the feast, Bulacan, people, and open up the box. This is how it looks like, my rice, my fresh food, at my fish, at my chicken, nakasama yan. <laughs> Grabe, no? Just imagine where your 700 pesos goes. It's just, you know, order lang yan ng milk tea or pizza. But this guy gets to feed for, uh, for a week because of this one. And so here are some more pictures. Thank you to our partners, Alay ng Puso, Missionaries of Charity. The sisters there have been very good in their distribution program. What they did, just to let you know, meron silang, meron tayong pinrent out, may sinan tayong mga coupons. And then sila sister, kilala nila yung mga community. So bibigyan lang nila ng coupon pag alam nila talagang hirap na hirap sila. So ang galing. So may distribution uh, mechanism tayo doon. And really, the poorest among the poor gets to get food from this effort and thank you to them thank you to osm foundation si noah ang ating tao uh, who makes sure it's facilitated also thank you to brother june from feast bulacan uh, for supplying the goods and all we have to do dear family is just to raise the money it's just uh, you know you, you can do it online www.thefeastmallofasia.com slash offering and you will see there all the ways that we can give from BPI to BDO to GCash. We have our Union Bank account. Uh, very soon we'll activate also our PayPal. So hopefully you can give in our distribution channels, in our giving channels. Special thank you sa mga iGivers Jan. Those people have committed to give at least a 1,000 pesos every month apart from their tithes and love offerings. Guys, uh, we're committed to, to feed the poor. And as we are nourished spiritually now, uh, our prayers would love to be moved into action. And so as your builder, I'm committing this. I want to feed 1,000 people. At least. That's a goal. That's our goal now. We want to feed 1,000 families throughout the, the weeks to come. We are at 370 now. I'm challenging the team. I'm challenging the Feast Mall of Asia family now. Let's try to keep this up weekly, if you may. Uh, we let's do it weekly because the food that we've given is only lasting for a week and so magugutom na naman sila afterwards so I wanna do this weekly with you guys so uh, keep your giving up keep, uh, keep on the cycle of generosity in your life and the law of reciprocity says 
As we give, we receive as well. God takes care of His people. God takes care of us. And through us, God could take care of our poor people. This is where our anger could be used in a better way. Hindi tayo contento na mayroon tayo mga kababayan na naghihirap at nagugutom. If we have the capability through this one, let's go. Let's do this. Let's raise uh, funds to feed 1,000 families. And I will update you every single week on our efforts. Can I count on you that you can give to this one? Just 700 pesos that you can set apart for this effort. If you have more, please do. Because uh, we need that. Our family, the family of God, the poor uh, would need that. So thank you for the generosity of everybody. I'm counting on each and every family there uh, represented through you and your gadget. Consider to give to God and continue the cycle of generosity. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Mahi, may announcements pa tayo? Practical! Ay, personal ang Tuesday! Yes! Meron na tayong maraming mga programa not just on a Sunday kahapon may worship night with brother Zach Pe you did Yay! it so well brother Z and uh, sa Tuesday meron personal and Tuesday personal and Tuesdays eto tanong ano labas natin yan uh, ano oras may 8.30 ng gabi po 8.30 ng gabi pagkatapos ng dinner at uh, kung gusto mo ma-entertain <laughs> ano lang to kulitan lang to just to stay connected and uh, yan makikilala natin ang iba't ibang mga tao sa Peace Mall of Asia we had one last Tuesday sabon na sabon ako kay Brother Dave <laughs> eh, panoorin nyo na lang <laughs> ang saya kulitan meron pa may practical on Thursdays meron naman practical on Thursdays ano naman ng practical on Thursdays may? Uh, tuturuan tayo magluto joke <laughs> Lahat ng mga do-it-yourself. Ayan, para naman maging productive tayo at magkaroon tayo ng chance uh, na learn. So, uh-huh. hashtag value adding uh-huh. naman. Practical Thursday, tuturuan tayo gumawa ng sala set. Comment <laughs> <laughs> oh, nyo nga kung anong gusto nyo matutunan. Uh, mag-ayos ng aircon. <laughs> Last Thursday, nagkaroon tayo ng practicalan ng mga singles living alone. How do they survival tips in living alone while in ECQ? Ganda ng discussion. You can replay it again in our page. Meron pang announcements? Man? Papuri Saturday. Ayan na. That's what we call our worship night now. Papuri Saturdays led by our worship team. And thank you, Brother Zach, for that wonderful night of worship last night. Meron pa? Okay, so that has been our Feast Mall of Asia Sunday. And our feast doesn't end on a Sunday. It's a daily thing. Continue our light groups. You can meet online. You can, you know, please make it personal. Send a message to people that you love. And we as a family would love to greet the Feast Mall of Asia family. We miss you. We love you. We're here for now. But we know that this will pass probably not so soon. But we stay strong with the love and strength of God. Yes. Hey, say bye bye, Haley. What's the name of Daddy? Daddy Dito. What's the name of Mommy? Mommy, Mommy. Yay! <laughs> Clap hands. Say ya. Yay! We love you, dear Feast Mall of Asia family. And let's keep, uh, let's stay connected, stay protected with one another. We love you, we miss you. Sa we'll see you very, very soon. Just stay connected here in our pages. Okay, we're gonna watch. Okay, bye guys. We love bye. you. Stay tuned in our page. We love you. See you soon. God bless. Thanks for our feast today.